Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a first person shooter in Unity 5 and welcome to episode 18. So this episode we're going to start looking at some AI. Now AI can be very complicated once you get deep into it and the scripts can be quite large. So I've always found the best way to deal with AI is always start relatively small and build up upon your scripts. Sometimes it's also best to take a multiple scripts, try each one out and then you can eventually combine them into one single script. So we're going to start with a script and make these enemy cubes come towards us. And the best way to do that is, um, well ultimately if you've got an enemy it's always best to have that script of the move towards which is what we'll do here but there's also ways you can alter that script which we'll work on later in this episode. So let's create a brand new script. Let's have this as um, enemy move. I'm going to open it up in mono develop and this is going to consist of three variables for now. One variable won't actually be used in this tutorial but I like to keep it there because as I say starting small and building upon them scripts is always a good idea so it's best to think forward of when you'll need it. So the first one is going to be the player the player, that's going to be a game object. Next one is going to be the enemy itself, so the current enemy this script is attached to. So far, the enemy uh, game object again. Next is going to be the enemy speed, so var enemy speed and I'm going to have this as a float rather than an integer. We'll see why as we get further on. So we're going to do a function update because we want this to be called every frame. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. So first things first we need to set the enemy move speed. So enemy speed is going to be equal to, for now I'm going to set this as 1. We will change this later on, you'll see exactly why. And next what we need to do is we need to make a script to allow the position of whatever this script is attached to move towards what we state, in this case, is the player. So transform.position equals vector3.move towards that's a capital M, capital T on that one. Open bracket, and now we need transform dot position. So that's the position of whatever this script is attached to, comma. And now we need to put where the script is moving towards. In this case, it's our position, wherever the player is. So the player dot transform dot position. Next, we need to define how quickly. So that's enemy speed close bracket, semicolon, and close curly bracket, and save. So back into Unity, let's attach this enemy move script to each of our three enemies. So that one, that one, and that one. So now let's set the variables in each of the enemies. So the player into that one, and the enemy into that one. And this is the variable, as I say, that we've not technically used in our script, but I, I like to keep everything uniform so as I can visually see everything rather than refer to this, especially in a long, long script. But this is only short and we'll probably change this later on anyway. So next one, first person control and the enemy. And the last one, let's set the enemy and the player. Now when we start this, we're gonna experience something which seems a little bit bizarre. So you've probably got something similar to that. The reason that's happened, the reason it's gone mad, is because the move speed of these enemies, even though it's set as one, is actually insanely high. So if we set the move speed to something like 0.02, um, it'll move at a more realistic pace. So that's the reason why it's a float and not an integer. So we should be able to go through this door now and the enemy cubes are moving towards us. 
So if we were to go over here, they'd now move towards us this way. You'll notice though at this point that um, whichever way the enemies move, they don't actually turn to look at us. That's something we'll sort out later on in this script, but for now, what we'll do is we'll actually set something extra in this script to say only move towards us when I say, for example, when we're close enough. So for that, we need an extra variable. So var, uh, what can we call it? Move, trigger, we'll have that as an integer. And what we'll do is we need an if statement here. So if move, trigger, double equals one, then that's when we set the enemy speed to 0 0.02 and move towards the player. And then close curly bracket to close that if statement and save. So now when we press play, go through the door, the enemy cubes won't be moving towards us at all. So if I go on here and change that move trigger to one, it'll start moving towards us. If I get rid of that one, it stops. So that is one way of creating, for example, if you have an extra game object which has a trigger um, script in it, which says when we're in here on trigger enter, we have that as one, then the enemy moves towards us. But we'll probably cover that next episode because next episode I do want to create a fully working AI script. Uh, but I'll, I'll explain a little bit later on this tutorial. So like I say, you can have that as one, it moves towards us. So next thing I want to do is I want to create another script to show a little bit more um, AI. For example, having the enemy look at us rather than just moving towards us. So I'm gonna create a new script for that. So it's fairly simple. And I have this as enemy look. So open that up in MonoDevelop or Visual Studio. Uh, let's get rid of everything. And let's see. First of all, we need the variable for the player. For the player game object. Semicolon. And function update. Open close bracket, open curly bracket. And all we need to do here is just transform dot look at and that is capital L capital A the player dot transform close bracket semicolon and close curly bracket and save so we've no real way of knowing whether they're actually looking at us at the moment because they're just plain cubes so what I'll do is I will go on to this enemy and hopefully I think I've got this right. So let's add in a, another cube. Let's shrink that a little bit. So 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So imagine if, let's rotate. That's not quite working as I, hope okay so so imagine if this was the face of the um, of the player or the enemy I should say so this should always be looking at us hopefully if it works correctly so we just need to add that enemy look onto the enemy and then we just need to define our first person controller onto there and press play. Let's go through the door and so you can see the cube is actually turning to look at us. However, we've put this on the wrong place, which is the front. So this is more than likely the front over here. So now we know currently our enemies are facing the wrong way. They're actually facing the wall. So theoretically, this is now the front of the enemy and this is say the enemy's face. So finally, we should be able to go through here and you can see just there sticking out is that cube. 
I'm not sure if you could see it quite so well on the video, so I'm just going to quickly apply um, that material to it so we can define the different colours. So yeah, there we go. We can see now that it is constantly facing us. So if we were to set the uh, move trigger as one, you could see it moving towards us, and even though we move over here, it's still turning to come towards us. So they are two very simple scripts to work with when it comes to artificial intelligence. Um, there's a lot more to go into, um, especially when it comes to enemies, because a lot of it is going to be animation. So realistically, what I want to do in the next episode is combine them two scripts, uh, add some extras and bring in an actual enemy rather than have these uh, these cubes here. Um, recently, I did a live stream as well, and I asked a couple of people whether they wanted the AI script to be in JavaScript or C Sharp. So I'm going to put it to you guys again. Uh, who watch this video, do you want me to do C Sharp or JavaScript of the artificial intelligence? Chances are, I know you're going to say C Sharp, so if you want that, you let me know and we'll do it in C Sharp. Um, I also saw people want some zombies in this game, so what I'll do is I will track down a zombie model which is fully rigged with animation to make things easier for ourselves, and we'll use that in this game and then we'll work with that to create animation, uh, rather work with the animations that are already built into it and go from there. Uh, after that, uh, what we're going to do is once we've got our enemies, once we've got them following us, uh, chasing us, whatever, we're going to add some bullet holes. When we shoot to the wall, we want bullet holes to appear, so we'll do that. And we'll also start a little bit of level design because obviously level design in a game is quite important. So we're going to go further on from there. And after that, there's still loads to learn to make a first person shooter. We'll go into different scenes. We'll go into menus. We'll go into loads of stuff after this. So I put it to you guys now. If you want to have a go, you try building your own artificial intelligence script using what you've learned previously in this entire series and using the couple of scripts we've added in this tutorial. It's not too difficult. We'll give it a go. And I realize that these episodes are coming quite far between. I promise you they're not going to be as far anymore. We will get uh, the length between them shorter and shorter. So until next episode, guys, thank you very much for watching.